All right. So we are definitely going to grid this um, piece. Um, so let's start with the grid, but then we're going to talk about how uh, one point perspective plays a role in doing this um, pier. Uh, believe it or not, the pier is actually divided into two into two pieces, which is why it's I think it was it's kind of confusing for people. But for those of you who are new to making a grid, you are going to take with your pencil and a ruler, you're going to take uh, your paper and mark. And um, you want your paper to be the same size as this source here. So this is an eight and a half by 11 inch printout, which is the same as a American size printed piece of material. You could use nine by 12, but nothing bigger, nothing smaller. Um, if you're working in centimeters, this is 28 centimeters and the short side is 21.5 centimeters. You want to block that off on whatever piece of paper you're working. And you're going to find the halfway point, which if I'm using inches, and you can switch back and forth between inches and centimeters. There is no problem. I happen to have an inches uh, uh, ruler here, so I'm making sure that I am exactly lined up my ruler right with the zero on one end here. Uh, so that's five and a half on the top. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the top. And when I do that, that means I can pretty easily, very easily, line my ruler up between those two points and draw a straight line, which is bisecting the exact half of the paper. I'm going to do that again on the short side too. On the short side, it's uh, eight and a half, which is 4.25 here. And now we have divided our paper into four equal rectangles. Um, we're going to further divide it, dividing each half in half. So if you're using inches, that's 2.75, 2.75, it's 7. If you're using centimeters, and there is a nice rhythm to this. It gets us out of our, whatever our busy minds are and gets us into the precision that we need to be able to draw. Drawing is engineering, it's precision, it's its own language. And we need to learn kind of where things are. If you're dividing the short side and you're using inches, it's 2.2. Inches is generally a really stupid way to measure things. I cannot stand the inch measurements, but in this particular case, I have these kind of memorized. But in general, centimeters are usually the way to go. The measurements make more sense. Okay. So we've got this. Oh, and I can see here. Bring this a little closer. So let's talk about a couple of things here before we get started. One of the things I wanted to review is this idea of vanishing point, right? Which basically means it looks like this deck is, this dock is getting smaller and kind of rising up. But we know that's not actually happening, right? What we know is actually happening is the dock, uh, we, we are translating three dimensions to two. And so as things move away from us, they get more narrow and smaller. That means that this line and this line Leah, just while you're doing that, for those of us who aren't in painting, does one point perspective mean something different to 
the stuff we've talked about in the drawing classes? Not at all. It's exactly okay. the same. It's exactly the same. And one point perspective basically means you've got a horizon line, which is where your eye level is, which in a landscape like this usually means where the water meets the land, right? Mm -hmm. And then we know that as these things angle, these lines are parallel. They're at different angles, so they will meet at a single vanishing point. Right. right? Just like the road, right? The drop road up here, right? We all learned how to draw that when we were a kid. The road is bigger here and smaller here. It goes to what we call a single vanishing point on the horizon. Now, the confusion with this piece, yeah, it's exactly the same, Jackie. That's why I was like, oh, come on, you guys. <laughs> I know we've talked about this. <laughs> um, uh, so the confusing thing about this particular dock is that it actually has two pieces. So if you look at it this way, uh, let's see. Maybe everything, if every, oh, maybe that is true. Maybe it does go, let's kind of go to the same vanishing point. There we go. Yep, actually it does. So notice that these two pieces, even though they're different, they all go to this single point, right? Because they're all going the same direction. Does that make sense? Um, and then these lines are always straight horizontal. Now, what I saw people doing in the drawing exercise was putting their, let's see, was making their, uh, let's see, was uh, in drawing their peers like, like this, right? And then their lines like that. Okay, but that's not what's happening. Our horizontal lines are always going straight. So that's what we're going to work on. Even if it's kind of shifted to the side, our tendency is to want to kind of shift our lines like this way, but that's not what's happening. So as we start to draw, give me a second, I'm going to catch up with you. Um, and we're just going to skip this thing. This is kind of a, I think this is off of Emma's doc. It, have you, is this Emma's cabin? Emma's, Emma's parents' cabin? I have uh, no idea. Um, Addie might know. Um, it could be, but I don't know. I don't, don't think so though. I don't think their cabin's on the lake. Um, okay, so I don't know where she got this photo, but yeah. So for those of you who are just joining, um, go ahead and we're talking about how everybody screwed up the perspective on <laughs> like everyone, every single one of you screwed up the perspective on this. So remember that these, regard, regardless of whether you simplify this bridge, everything is going to go to the same vanishing point. And I'm going to show you how to handle that, right, to make sure that you do that. Um, so right now I'm going to have, I'm going to, I'm going to grid my, let's put this up here. I know I'll move this up in a second. And I'm going to grid this. For those of you who are just getting here, give me just a second. I'm going to grid really quickly. This is a nine by 12 inch piece of paper. So my measurements are a little bit different, um, but should be close enough. So the grid helps us. I was also saying that like the grid right now is a crutch. It helps us understand kind of what's happening as we translate three dimensions to two. Nine.
However, did you guys like wash? Kind of fun, isn't it? It was frustrating. <laughs> I really liked it. It's a whole different thing. It really is a cross between I'm only beginning to learn the beats myself. Um, it's definitely not just for little kids. Sorry, I'm still trying to position this. I wonder, I wonder if I can do this. No. <laughs> Working with the limits. Give me just a second, you guys. All right. So, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to identify where the horizon line is. Where is it? Can anybody see it? And I've marked it. It's right below the halfway point. Right, and it's a line that goes straight across. So what you're gonna do is draw that line in first. Now, if you want to get this pier in, which I think is the first thing we can do, you certainly can kind of mark and see, oh, where is this? Oh, let me take a picture of this so you guys have it. I'm going to take a very clear picture. So, um, Tosh, you weren't here, but Jackie asked a really good question, which is, is this one point perspective different than the stuff we've been learning in beginning drawing? And my point is, in painting, just because we were painting, was it, is it different? And my point is, no. It's exactly the same, which means that you've got to know it to be able to paint, right? To be able to paint appropriately, you've got to know how to draw and how to draw these things. That's why I push, that's why we push drawing so much. Okay, so we've got this. So I could do that, right? This point seems to be about at the halfway. I could do that. And over here, I know I've kind of ripped this drawing up. It looks like the end is about here. Right? I could do that. But what's even easier is that at the horizon, the horizon, the vanishing point comes right here, right at this cross. So I can mark that here. And then with my ruler, I can keep my ruler at the halfway point and just draw it. And then see, I'm keeping my ruler at, at this point, because that is the, the same. And then I'm moving it to the other point to get the correct perspective. Got that? Does that make sense? See how I'm doing that? Are you in bed, Tosh? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. Good for you. My gosh. Well, <laughs> I kind of had a tough day. I don't like that. But so whether we're going to simplify this, right, or you're going to add in the two, you can, I'm going to give you the option of simplifying this dock, right? And then that also, and then we've got this shadow that's coming off. I don't know if the shadow will. Oh, yeah, look at that. The shadow also goes to the vanishing point. Isn't that interesting? I wasn't sure that was going to happen. Yep. So whether you want to do two docks, right, or one dock, you can just keep your ruler here and then just lift the bottom part. See that? And that's going to get you the proper angle. So say you wanted to narrow this, right? Make a different kind of dock. You can move it to here. 
as long as this point stays at the single vanishing point, you can make this as wide or as narrow as you like. Got that? Does that make sense, you guys? So you have the option. And then all of the other lines, they don't go like this. They're not going like this, which is what you all did. That's not what's happening. Oops, sorry, here, let me. This is what's happening. This is not what's happening, right? Almost everybody did that. These lines, horizontal lines, need to be straight across. So the end of the dock is here. Oh, that isn't straight. Hold on. There we go. That's straight, right? So the end of my dock is here. If I want to get my shadow in. shadow here is like this. Oops, nope. I'm not being careful. I'm staying at that vanishing point. All right, everything's going to that single spot. And then these lines are straight. So if you want to add in the second dot, you'll bring, you'll go, you'll, do, you'll go straight down like this, right? And then this line also goes to that same vanishing point. See that? And you can erase this one. So if you want to do the two level dot, and this is the shadow. which about here ends up, oh, I made my dock a little bit too long. So that's the point of how the vanishing point works. So every time you see a subject like this, this is where you want to go with it. And then these lines, also go straight down. You can't really see. It's mostly dark down there. We can't really see this, but if we can see this, it goes straight down. And then you've got these kind of cool, wavy little Right. So then the next set of, then the other shapes are pretty easy. Oh yes, and then these, don't forget these. If you're going to put the boards in, this is also a straight across line. It's not angled. It's just straight. Just like this line, just like the horizon line. It's straight. So this is a rule of perspective. Um, what will happen is these lines will get further apart as you get closer, right? Depending on how detailed you want to get. Oh, look, I'm starting to slant a little bit because I'm having a hard time. So sometimes you slant without really even knowing it. If you want to, you can focus on that. If you'd rather, you can just focus on these, right? More of these dark light shapes that are within uh, the thing. And then let's see, I'm gonna mark off the other. Mostly these are dark and light shapes. We're gonna skip this, this is kind of boring. There is this cool fly. There's, these are pretty simple shapes. You're gonna maybe find that you wish you were painting these trees, <laughs> right? I'm just kind of getting those shapes in. I'm gonna take a picture of this so you can see it. 
So now you want to go, oh, wait, and one last thing here. So now we're just getting value changes. We're crossing that out here. We're not dealing with that. Go. So, so this is what you want to remember. Where you need to establish is the horizon line and the single vanishing point first. Then you can get your angles straight. I can, and then I can erase these lines. Once I get everything in, I can kind of erase the lines unless I need them to be there. I can see there's this kind of spillage happening here. I'm probably going to focus more on this than at least the original dog pieces. And once we get these basic shapes in, I'll remove this and we'll go to something where you can see. More of the picture because I kind of erased some things. Don't get confused with your horizon line versus your mountain line here. See how quickly and easily I went too far up? There we go. Here it's kind of a lighter color. And then we've got this tree here. Right now. Boy, this would really be a fantastic piece for charcoal. I really would love to do this in charcoal. Okay. We'll get to charcoal very soon. I'm hoping to get to charcoal by August. So I hope everybody's getting their charcoal pieces. You know, all I really do need to do is just teach one class in charcoal and then whoever hasn't gotten their charcoal pieces is gonna be really jealous of the people who have it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then you'll be like, it will not be a problem at all. You will totally get it. Okay. Um, let me take a picture of this. And then I'd love to see your pictures of this. Are you guys um, sort of following the logic? I'm not so worried about your dock being wide, Addie. I just want these. You're okay. Your dock is that wide, believe it or not. You could even make okay. You could even make it longer, but I'm not worried about this distance as much as I am about these lines being correct, right? Okay. As yeah. Effective lines. You have some flexibility. Good question. So when you've got your point, when you've got, whoops, sorry. When you've got yourself to this point, I have to say I am completely captivated by gouache right now. I've never really used it. Emma sort of talked me into trying it and I'm like, oh my God, it's amazing. So at some point I'll probably be introducing gouache into lessons. I don't know when. But soon, let's see. Yeah, 
notice how that looks totally right. So Jackie, do you have the trees in? I didn't see that part. Oh, I can't see. Oh, the whole picture. Yeah. I sent a picture over. Sorry, here oh, it is. Sorry, I'll look at it here. Sorry. Yeah, uh, let's see. There we go. Much, much better. Much better. Good job, Jean. Good job, you guys. So then my suggestion is you can either draw or paint this, whatever you wanted. If you want to just keep working in pencil, that's totally fine. Then you'll just start, right? And here, let me take a picture of the piece without, I'm going to send over. There's only just so much I can put in. I'm going to send this picture so you guys can see the details without all the drawing, all the, you know, junk on it. So you can see the value transitions. If you're working with pencil, you're just going to start getting the darkest areas in first. So actually, there is, and that will also go. Um, kind of see a deck line below here and we've got some straight up and down vertical pilings here yep with these things so you can get in your darkest stuff you can see that it gets really dark back here and there's also a side sort of on the side and that also will go to the vanishing point so here hold on, let me show you this without drawing too many pick too many things you can see here oh. you can see here that the sides also go to the same vanishing point so if I want to add the, when I mean I mean the side of the, I mean the side of the deck, right? Not just the top. So if I want to like get this kind of lighter side going down, I also line it up at the vanishing point here, and then everything below here becomes darker. Everything past here becomes pretty dark. This is kind of a medium. It's not as dark as the shadow. See that? And then, let's see, over here. Here it goes up on the other side. So these are also straight up and down. These Piers and they become a little harder to see, so that's why I sent over. I'm, that's why I sent over a copy of this picture without the marks on it, because you're. It's going to be hard to see here for some reason. Light's not fantastic here today. I'll try and get everything in, but I can't quite get everything. But I can see that there's like a pier here. Notice that. Um, these things, they go to the same, they do. Amazing. Yep, 
They sure do. Okay, so here's the other thing. <laughs> if you really want to be technical, line up the top of the pier here. No, that's not what's happening. This, um, these come up a little higher. Notice as things go farther away, they also come up a little higher than these. And then off we go with our darks and our lights, right? Let's leave the tree for last. And if you remember, there's at least five values in here. Okay. There you go. So much better, right, Tosh? Yeah. Yep. So don't forget your drawing. <laughs> don't forget the drawing when you're when you're doing the painting. And the incitement of doing the painting, we forget the drawing. And then we realize we can't really afford to do that. So paint, I guess, like learning a new medium. What, what did you find frustrating about gouache, Jean? Out of curiosity. I, I didn't know how to use it. So what do you I, I couldn't I couldn't blend things. I couldn't, you know, I'm used to acrylic and I'm used to watercolor, and I couldn't figure out where the halfway point was. Um, you know, it is really a halfway point. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's like a halfway. Um, the difference between gouache and watercolor is that gouache can be reactivated. Meaning once it dries, you can wet it again. Yeah. So you can go back in and blend a little bit like you would with acrylic. Yeah, but it's definitely, uh, you have to get used to it. But it's, um, I liked it. I felt like it had all that, you know, uh, electricity of a watercolor painting while, while you could layer more lights on darks than you could with you, you, you weren't so stuck on, you know, you didn't have, you weren't so stuck on just preserving your lights. Right. I feel like you could layer them on top, but I get it if it felt like different. It is different. It's definitely different. It's good to try. It's, you know, it's good to, anyway, but it's good to try new things. As we know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and I liked it. I liked it for its flexibility. I can see why, but for a long time, I didn't. I had no interest in it at all. So it was just watching what Emma produced that made me kind of interested in it. Yeah, can you show us again what you did with the poles? They're just straight up and down. Yeah. And were you doing something with it? With the I'm checking to see if the vanishing point worked, but it doesn't. It's it's not like they line up at the vanishing point. Um, They're just higher up. Right. Yeah. I thought maybe that was happening, but it's not happening. I'm like, nope, those that would be totally great, wouldn't it? If like the tops of these also lined up with the vanishing point, but that is not, <laughs> that is not what's happening. It's a little bit like the roof. But 
But what I can say about these poles is that they do go straight up and down, right? So like these go vertically across, the poles go straight up and down. And I'm also really noticing that although there's some darkness and lightness on this bridge, notice that where the bridge meets the water, it's lighter, right? There's this kind of four here in the water. And this is like a four to five. Um, but it gets a lighter as the, so the bridge, the sorry, the deck really shows up against this darker water. Notice even in this lighter section that things are kind of darker in parts of the lighter, lighter section. And they kind of get lighter and darker here towards the front. a little buoy hanging out here. So as I'm working these light and dark edges, uh, I want my deck, the edge where the dark water meets my deck needs to be darker than the, the needs to be darker than the deck, right? Um, here we can make the deck darker. And that's partly because it's next to lighter water, but also because it is darker. And then we'll deal with the tree later. Oops, sorry. When you're ready to get to the trees, let me know and we'll talk about them. This really is a good painting subject because there aren't that many dark light transitions.
Sorry, I don't mean to, <laughs> I'm gonna remove the spotlight here so I'm not making you guys dizzy. Here. <laughs> what did I just do? How do I get out of this meeting? There we go, okay. Somehow I zoomed up my thing. And, uh, let's see here. All right. And send it along as you're working on it. By the way, everybody's doing great on the perspective. I knew if we reviewed it. Y'all would pick it up again. Yeah, Allie, really nice, really nice. Oh, lovely, Jackie. I love how everybody's, so work on, so think about this edge right here, right? Like, think about, I know it's looking a little bit, oh wait. There we go. Look at how this edge has little bits of, see, try, I try and create this ragged edge um with these little bit let's see how would i do that i mean i think everybody's going to do it their own way but you know you can kind of like let bring out little bits of and you can also take your pencil your eraser in a little bit but try not to be too regular right like so work on this edge. There's some kind of nice little. See what you can do with your pencil to create this light, dark streaks that happen with the waves. It becomes less uh, easy to see later, but this is kind of conveying oh, it's a soft edge. Notice that where there's a shift, you do want to maybe a strong dark line where the horizon is, where the water meets the mountains. And even though they're mostly the same value, notice how, why do I, why can I see? I can still pretty distinctly see. There's kind of a little light line, right? So maybe you take your eraser and Maybe Tosh, you take that great eraser and you make it a little bit lighter at the edge where the, um, you know, the vanishing point is, right? Where the water meets the, the mountains. Notice what's happening at that edge 
and see, although this is the same value, how can I show the difference? How is it clear in the photograph? Everybody's going to do this differently. So I can only give you so much technique, you guys. I can tell you, look at the edge. But it's your job to figure out how to make those edges look distinct. Oh, this is good for me. I get so bored with the pencil. <laughs> This class forces me to deal with my pencil. I'm like, I could totally handle this in any medium but pencil. Pencil really bores me. And I'm like, maybe I can do it by going up and down. This may work, it may not. Not bad. I'm not a super fan, but I'm going up and you know vertically on the land mass and trying to leave a little light edge and horizontally on the water edge. You might have another idea. And then when you get to the trees, you're not going to paint every leaf. Remember that. We're going to kind of draw around the shape. So here, let me get up here so you can see this. Let me show you this too. So you're going to notice here, I have kind of gone around the edges of things. I know there's a lot of holes here, but I'm starting with this kind of circular movement but going around that outer sort of orange shape and i know this is very dark i might even use a darker here's a 7d i wonder what that would look like Woo! i'm not going to start with that i'm going to start with my hb i'll go to the 7d later I'm going to go to a darker pencil later. And now, do you see how I'm kind of like just darkening everywhere here? This is, the leaves are the darkest. I'm doing circular motions. I'm going to cover up the whole thing and then I'm going to go back in with my eraser and see if I can pull out some of the sky holes for those who took free drawing for me, with me for a month in January, sky holes, right? So that's like where I kind of come back in. I start by coming back in and looking at some of these areas where there are spaces, kind of getting the shape of the leaf, maybe even a couple of tree branches. I'm not sure how well this is working. This is how much I, 
I'm bored by pencil. I'm already bored with this whole thing and can imagine how I would paint it and, you know, bored. but okay, I'm working. <laughs> Got me working through it. Working through the boredom of how boring the pencil is. Notice that, huh? Can you tell us one more time how boring it is? It's really boring. <laughs> <laughs> I love how in the beginning of class it's like drawing is so important. <laughs> it is it sounds really like it's so boring. boring. <laughs> it's not the drawing that's boring, it's the pencil that's boring. Nice. It's actually the pencil that's boring to me. Drawing is interesting. This pencil is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a, but the drawing, I draw with my paintbrush. I draw with charcoal. And I draw with um, every pastels and every other medium known to man. <laughs> it's just like, I'm like, oh my God, I just find the pencil really boring. But I'm sticking with it. And you see how I'm kind of working around, I'm adding in areas of light, light and darkness. And I'm, I'm really trying to get leaf shape in, not in a regular way, right? I'm looking to see how the leaves kind of interact with the edges of the white space. Yeah, I just find this implement, this tool very boring. That's the only thing. I love to draw. I'm adding in some of my branches. I'm keeping some areas solid. See how I'm starting to kind of fill this out. And by the way, that is purely a preference. You're going to find, I'm going to introduce you to all drawing implements. And you're going to find which ones you like the best. And don't let me influence you. Some people love the pencil and do beautiful work with the pencil. Uh, so don't let me influence you in, with my personal feelings. Um, but know that you will wind up having preferences. This is good to know about yourself. What is it that I like to use? And ultimately, I want you guys to know how to use everything. And I also want you to know that you can draw, that you draw with every utensil. Right? Every everything we draw with. We draw with our paintbrush. We draw with charcoal. We draw with marker. We draw with ink. Oh my god, ink will blow your flipping mind. Right, Jean? Yep. <laughs> I, I used ink for our whole watercolor um, uh, month. I used ink for it all. It was fun. Yeah, ink is amazing. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people hate it. You're allowed to hate it if you don't like it, right? But it will definitely blow your mind. 
it's definitely not your your way of thinking about drawing. I, I think the thing is people think of drawing as only something you do with your pencil. But we can draw with anything. Sure, you can draw with a uh, sticks of mud in a, in the sand, right? You can draw with so many things. All right. I'm going to go to a, to finish this, I'm going to go to a, um, a, a B pencil. I'm going to use a 4B. We'll see how that looks. So the, remember the Bs are, the B means black or bold. Um, and the higher the number, the darker it is. So I can kind of go in here over my HB with more leaf shape and patterns. Oh, there we go. That's a little bit better. I can go in with kind of darker. I can make my shapes a little bit lighter over here. Jean, how do you like your new boss? Oh, he's terrific. That's so awesome. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how long it takes before working there will feel like normal. <laughs> I can imagine there's, it's just so different it's, from the well, it's It's starting to, it started, you know, I don't have to, for most tasks, I don't have to think 20 times to figure out how to do them. I just know how to do them. So that's right. what makes me feel better. And I'm starting to get to know the people and they're all really lovely, so. They are really nice. Your group is super nice. Do you know of yet? We've done one class with them, and now we're waiting to see if they'll sign up for the program. They've committed to it. They're just right. They're so busy. To... It's hard for them to figure out when and. Well, they. I don't think they should join join before the fall. No, I don't think I told them that. So okay, so. good. So they're like, so yeah, so they're going to join, but they're trying to figure out like you know, like a lot of companies. This conversation we've been having right um how um you know how do you let your employees know about it right like right. and 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 it's hard you have to build that infrastructure not all companies have that natural infrastructure they, and they, they do for the new york office so do they, yeah do they have a whole like um um there's a weekly meeting with the entire staff of the New York office. That's nice. Then different departments have their own meetings and. Right, right, right. So they, but even then, it, I suppose that that would be a perfect place to talk about it. Yeah. But you know, like just the sort of continue, I mean, people are so busy. I think that's like the hardest thing. Is that's the problem so right now. So busy that like getting their attention that this is something they should want to do and that their company is, you know what I mean? It's like a non-work thing in a work environment. So I can get this, it's tricky. Most people just want to leave work and, you know, do their stuff elsewhere. They're a pretty social bunch, which is nice, but. Have you guys gotten together yet in person? I've, I've gone into the office twice and had lunch with a bunch of people and had drinks with a bunch of people. So that was fun. Heather seems like fun. Oh yeah, she's great. Anyway, we can 
starting to work along. Yeah, that's starting to look a little better. I'm interested to see how you guys are choosing to solve these edge problems. So feel free to send anything over to inspire the rest of us, right? How are you using that tool? Okay, so Jessica just sent me a thing. It's cat toys and one looks like um, a palette and the other looks like a, a tube yeah. of oil paint. Carson and Mutant. Ah, Carson and Mutant. <laughs> Let's send that over the thread. Yeah. Here, hold on. Oh God, that's funny. I just said, now I have to buy art supplies for the cats. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Pawson. Nice, Addie. Really good. Okay, so I like how Addie handled her leaves. She's going a little lighter. Now, remember, these are dark, ultimately, right? So you're going to keep going over them. I like how you handled this. I like it. This is going well. I like your solution. Anybody else want to share? I like Jackie what's happening with yours. Very nice. This is good, you guys. You know, it's funny. There's a lot that has to, technique is hugely important, right? Understanding how the vanishing points work, understanding how mark making works, understanding how to work edges works um that that's all technique oriented but how you choose to solve these problems how do i show this edge against this edge and they're almost the same value how do i make this a soft edge how do i show that using whatever tool i have that is really something that you kind of make decisions on yourself and it's interesting because people do different things like um, and that's what's kind of neat about it. Yeah, lovely, Jean. Oh, I like this. I love how you handled this. Bring those darks down into the shadow. Bring your tree branches down here. Yeah, I'm working on that. I love it. See, really interesting. Now this, um, ooh, nice, Jackie. So, okay, so now that you started here, Jackie, let's like start filling in. Start playing around with how you can make this look more leaf-like, get your eraser involved, get a maybe darker pencil involved. Notice that all of those strong edges that you have now have to have kind of leaf bits hanging off them, right? Yes. So look at how those edges look. Interesting. Uh, Jean, I do think this area looks the way- I have to work on that. Yeah, yeah, work on that. But I love this solution. I love that solution, um, the lightning in the middle. It really, it's really nice. Thank you. And that's like decisions that you're starting to make now that you're confident, right, in your technique. This is the thing that's interesting. So what can you do with that pencil? Show me up with the pencil, you guys. That's what I want you to do. Show me up. <laughs> And tomorrow, if you can make it, we're doing um, uh, a jellyfish and watercolor. 
although I may allow some gouache if people want to jump in with that later. But we're gonna we're gonna start with watercolor because, as you said, Jean, they're very different things.
Wow, it got really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Never mind, just you guys keep going. I didn't mean to wreck the, the flow. Nice, Jean. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, notice what happens. I got a little uh, too dark here, right here, and it kind of stuck out sort of funny, right? So notice how do we, in fact, really, I should really address this. Even though I don't want to. <laughs> I'm like, I should. It should be darker, right? Leah, did you draw it all on the white? Is on the light part of the water? Or is that just white? I did draw, believe it or not. Okay. Yeah, just, that doesn't show from from the camera. Here, I did a little bit, but also I just quit. <laughs> I was like, um, you got bored. I really did. <laughs> I mean, I could lie to you guys, and I think I've got you along the way enough so you can do it yourself. Um, yeah, I just got bored. Now I'm going over with my darker pencil. Oh yeah, and that's that's a little bit better for me. Okay, a B, a four B. This makes things nicer. I can see. Yes, here. <laughs> can't keep anything from you guys. That's the problem. <laughs> I know Jessica, Jessica was here. She would tell me, but graphite, Leah, brown graphite, that's an amazing thing. And we have a, this wonderful bar, uh, Janet Chan. I mean, everybody's great in that beginning drawing class on Saturdays, but Janet really does marvelous things with the pencil. She's a pro. Yeah. I'll send you where this is now. But I think your guys' drawings are actually going to be better than mine at this point. Oh, nice, Tosh. Very nice. Lovely. Very romantic. 
So now work on kind of, can you make a few leaves float, right? Out here on these edges. So you see how the leaves are kind of floating and some are like lines and some are more thick, right? Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Okay. In a weird way, it's a soft edge, but really these are great. Jeannie, I love yours. It's still, like, I love the contrast. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Isn't she good? Didn't she do a good job at that? Like, the values are really prominent. I love it. Nice, Jackie. So, Jackie, see, watch, be careful of this line here, right? That's going up the edge like this, because that is um, kind of not the direction. It's kind of bothering me because most of our dark lines are going horizontally across. So, a line uh, is up like that. It's kind of bothersome, yeah. right? Yep. So this is what I'm talking about. When we talk about mark making, that's what we're talking about, right? So when you're you're drawing, you're not just drawing, you're like, you're thinking about what your marks look like on the paper. And you're careful about that. Nice job, though. I like how everything's looking. Doc looks perfect. You guys killed it. No Gina today. I thought we'd get a chance to see her. I bet she's super busy. She's crazy busy. I bet. Right 
Nice, Addie. I like how you're handling. So I do notice a little bit that your dock is disappearing here, right? Which means something either has to get lighter or maybe a little bit darker around the edge, right? Because your dock should be kind of popping out. Okay. Yeah. Doing that. So uh -huh. very nice. I like where your I like your tree. It's very pretty. I like how you have this little light edge here. Very nice. I think these are great. These are fantastic. Your edges are pretty great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, we will not criticize you, Lana. All I say is you've got your, um, you have done, got your perspective right, and that's the only thing I care about. <laughs> Good job. I'll be right back, you guys. Good job, you guys.
I think I'm done, Leah. Let's see. Yeah, girl. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would darken a little bit in here. I know it's lighter. Uh huh. A little bit darker in the middle. Okay. But yeah, I like it. It's wonderful. It's a lovely drawing. Good job. <laughs> I'm like, you got, you nailed it. Thank you. Did um, uh, did this lesson help with anything today? Like. Oh yeah, like the dock is much better here than it was in the gouache. Right, right. Now that was partly, uh, Emma and I were having a mechanical issue because she had used her phone. She couldn't right. WhatsApp messages. The next day her drawing lesson was much more complete. She was able to you know, go over all that stuff. Um, but also I just think it's easy to forget the drawing rules when you start painting. Right. It's easy to forget that you're not, um, that you draw with everything, right? So it's easy to think, oh, drawing is just something I do with my pencil, but it's not, right? We, we draw with everything. It's easiest to draw with your pencil. Right. That's the easiest thing to see, but... Nice, Jackie, Jackie. So now try and make this tree line less um, solid, right? And look at what's happening at the edges. On the outside edges, we have leaf shapes kind of sticking out, kind of floating into the white. On the inside, we have areas that are lights and areas that are not light. So now we want to get rid of some of that solidity and add in more white shapes light shapes that we then add edges to you know where these leaf shapes are kind of floating out see that i actually find that a bit hard to see would you be able to do a like a close-up photo um sure thank you Absolutely. just my terrible eyesight ah. here hold on thank you let me do that right now. i know what you mean i just can't see it because my 
eyes are so sucky. Yeah, here, hold on, let me do that. How's it? Is that better? I think so, let me just. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Yay. I'd like to see this white pop out more, Addie, which means you may need to get a little bit darker around the edges. Okay. Uh, this white bit here, right, that I'm pointing at. Other than that, I think it's in pretty good shape. Awesome, thanks. Nice, Jean. Yeah, your con that's beautiful. Just beautiful. All right, you can drink a glass of wine now. <laughs> good student. Very good student. <laughs> I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> I might have to sign off. Thank you so much for the class. <laughs> good job, sweetie. All right, we'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. I'm being on. Have a good one. And Jean, you can totally hang with us, but I think you're done. I was going to ask, would you, will Flora be having any open studio stuff or is she too far Flora home? Flora is not in open studios. No. Okay. You can't get to Flora, honey. <laughs> not unless you pay a lot no, of No, no, no. I didn't think I could like take a class or anything, but I, I might know. just I go to the studio. You can't even see her unless you pay a lot of money. That's. That's who Flora Bully is. She is not accessible in any way. Uh, yeah. Uh, honestly, I'm not a big fan of her work, so I don't think you're missing that much. But I, I know the process is kind of exciting. You know, she, yeah. I, I, there, there, are, there are a ton of people who are painting. There are several people who are painting intuitively on the tour, and I think you'll be able to see who those are. Um, and what you should do is fo follow PDX Open Studios now on Instagram because a lot of our, we're doing artist takeovers. So you'll see all these, you can go and see all these different artists dem demoing their process. In fact, I would highly recommend you guys all do this. Here, I'm gonna. Uh, PDX Open here, Studio? I'll, I'll type it up. It's on Instagram, PDX Open Studios. It is so exciting, right? We've never done this before, but now we're giving our artists, um, we're uh, giving our artists the Instagram page for a day and each and each one is doing, they're just really awesome. They're video and, and painting live and IGTV and all kinds of things that are really, really, really fun. So I think the woman who's on there right now is an intuitive painter. And she just posted a demo from her studio. Her name is Andrea Henning. But all you have to do is go to Open Studios. You'll see it. Hi, everybody. Inkling says hi. Inkling. We're going to ink. Inkling soon. <laughs> oh, Addie, beautiful. Lovely. Great work, you guys. Wonderful work. I'm proud of you. I'm glad, I, do you mind that we went back and did this again, the same subject again? I think it was important to do it again, just to make sure we're crossing our I's and dotting our T's, you know, no, crossing our T's and dotting our I's, not the other way around. I was, I was actually looking at some of my older stuff and thinking like the otter and things that I had been very happy with, but thinking I should try it again now because I have more skill now. I think that's a great idea, just to see what you would do, right? Like how mm -hmm. you handle that different. I, I think that's a great, always a great idea. 
to like keep going back and doing the same. Of course, I might do it and then hate it and go, oh, I was better three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, like as your skills improve, you will do this kind of up and down thing, right? Some days you'll be good. Other days you'll be like, ugh. Don't I know anything, right? Haven't I learned anything? And that's really, that's all progress, but it doesn't feel like it. Right. It means you're integrating, right? What you know all together so that it becomes almost background. Like you know it without really, it's like learning to drive. When you first learn to drive, right? You're like, ah, and then later you just kind of learn how to do things without really thinking about it. It's mm -hmm. like learning how to drive. Um, You'll get to the point where you'll be able to do a lot of things without thinking about them. But right now, actually, Dean, just like you described about work, you don't have to now you have to think 20 things before you can do it, right? Like it's literally the same thing. <laughs> so you might do it worse, but that's only because you know more. Okay, that works. Right, and, <laughs> and you're trying to integrate that into covering all your subjects. That's why I try to do as many different subjects as possible so that you guys can have a reference for trying different things, right? And you don't say to yourself, oh, trees are hard, or oh, water is hard, or oh, you know, I'm only sticking to the things, right? I want you to have experience working with all these different things and start to see what's the same about them and what's different, right? Like what's, what is, what is universal about the artistic choices I make and what is like, what is very specific to the subject? And um, that's, that's like learning a language, right? So it takes, I think probably several years to learn a language, like to really learn it. I've never learned a language. Except for this Did you post the Instagram thing on this? This, oh, uh, I put it on the chat. Here, I put it on WhatsApp. I oh, okay. Let me do that. Great idea. At CDX Open Studios. There we go. There we go. That's it. about 10 minutes left so so you can get done
Are you, you're watching it now? <laughs> no, I'm laughing because Jessica just showed me a picture of her cats playing with the oh. with, with the art supply cat toys. <laughs> oh, that's great. No. Oh, I like DK Bolajat. I know, that's an interesting dude, right? Oh, uh, that's Darla, that's Darla. Yeah. Oh. Yes, so at, we'll have like 40, I think we have 40 or 50, maybe even 60 artists taking over uh, the Instagram throughout, you know, starting in July and moving forward. So there'll be a new one each day. Um, and you can see that, that some of them are really, some of them are like, totally scared they've never really done that before they don't really know how <laughs> we're like you can be really simple but i found it to be very profound i found it to be a lot it's a great preview of how to do open studios because you can kind of look and see the artists meet them get a little bit of sense of their process and who they are mm -hmm. um, and uh and uh, i think it's pretty great like I think it's, and I think it's kind of entertaining along the way. Yeah. Right. It's My, just really, it's just really fun to see how differently people work. work. I know, right? So it'll be, it's kind of like, so glad, Lana. Your perspective is good. You could make your hills a little darker so we can see them in the background, but just have fun. Yeah, just have fun. Let's have fun with this. I mean, we learned our thing, which is perspective. So after that, I'm not going to be too like like demanding. I'm I'm more interested in what the decisions you guys are making, right? I'm interested in these decisions. I'm interested in seeing how they start to form. I have to call Jessica. I want to check in with her.
Okay, Leah, all I can say is there better not be a bad wildfire or more Delta in in Portland because I really want to come. It doesn't have to be fun. <laughs> That's good. That makes that me happy. So if anybody else wants to check out artists at work, check out the PDX Open Studios Instagram. We'll be having new artists on there. You'll see me in there. You'll see my studio. Um, I'm say your, your studio mate. You'll see my studio mate, who's a jeweler and a, uh, also a watercolor painter, very lovely one. Um, there's all kinds of things here. I'm going to stop. Well,